Okay. So this is part of uh, chapter three, objective two. I wanted to introduce you to what an account generally looks like. So uh, what you, what I asked you for the names of the accounts or the title of the account. So cash is its own account. Accounts receivable is its own account. Accounts payable is its own account. Those are the titles. Service revenue is an account title. Rent expense is an account title. Retained earnings is an account title. All of those are individual accounts and they are considered the title of the account. And like I said, if you look, there's only, there's two sides to an account because only two things can happen to an account. You either have an increase or a decrease in the account. What I like to, um, uh, and just like your savings account, right? Only two things can happen to your savings account, right? It's either gonna either increase, you're gonna have more savings, or it's gonna decrease because you're taking money out, so you have less savings. And so th that's true for accounts. Only two things can happen in every single account that we looked at on the income statement and on the balance sheet. Only two things can happen in every single one of those individual accounts. We either have more of it or less of it, which means we either have an increase in it or a decrease in it. Every account has two sides. Um, the left side of an account and a right side of the account. The left side of the account is simply called the debit side. Okay. The right side of the account is called the credit side. What I need you to do <clears throat> to stop any and all confusion that this happens. I know you've all been subject to the banking system. A lot of you already have uh, debit cards and credit cards. I need you to forget about all of that because that's how banks talk about things. And this is not, I'm not teaching banking. This is accounting. Okay. So I need you to forget about what you already know about those words and learn what these words mean in accounting. In accounting, a, the debit side is simply the left side of an account. That's it. And every single account, regardless what the title is, cash, accounts receivable, uh, accounts payable, notes payable, retained earnings, have a debit side, they have two sides. The left side of the account is simply called the debit side. That's all you need to know. It's the left side of an account, period. Doesn't mean anything other than the left side of an account in accounting. The right side of an account is the credit side of the account. Again, that's all that means. Uh, the credit side is simply the right side of an account. Um, and so it's really important to understand that accounts have titles. You know those as very specific accounts on the balance sheet and on the income statement of all those individual accounts. And only two things can happen in those accounts. Numbers are either going to be placed on the left side of the account or the debit side of the account, or numbers are going to be placed on the right side of that account, which is the credit side. Um, what you're going to learn very shortly is that the left side of an account increases certain accounts. In other words, uh, the debit side of an account means more of something in some accounts. And the right side of an account, the credit side, means more of something in other accounts. And that's gonna be the tricky part for you to remember. Uh, before I move on to showing you a little bit more, I like to look at the account as a coin. You all know what, what coins are, right? Pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, etc. cetera. Uh, they, still make ha they still have half dollars, even have dollar coins, right? So a coin has two sides. When you flip a coin, it's either going to hit. Uh, it's either going to fall on one side or the other. Well, the same thing in accounting. Whenever money is involved, 
it's either going to get put on one side or the other. All right. There's no middle. Um, it's one side or the other. And so I need you to think about these accounts very similar to a way you would think about flipping a coin. It's either going to be on one side or the other. Okay. Um, the left side is simply called the debit side of an account. Right side is simply called a credit side. Again, forget everything you know that your bank taught you or society taught you about these words. We're talking accounting now. Okay. Debit, left side. Credit means right side. That's it. Of an account. That's it. Doesn't mean anything else. All right. Um, they're, uh, they're commonly abbreviated DRCR. We'll see that. Let's take a look at. Uh, the cash account from our um, learning objective one, we saw that cash was very, very active, very, very active account in, uh, in our learning objective number one. <clears throat> we had to analyze whether we had more cash or less cash in every single event of those 11 events that happened to Sierra Corporation. Um, in learning objective one that you actually had homework about. And what we analyze in our heads is whether we had more cash or whether we had less cash. So this is just simply the analysis. Like I was telling you last class, when we do analysis, we're not doing accounting yet. We're simply, you know, we would never see this in the counting uh, records. Just 10,000 splattered there and a negative sign before five. We don't do positive and negatives um, in, in these same way. Okay. Uh, what we do is every time we have uh, an increase in cash, and like I said, some accounts increase on one side, some accounts increase on the other side. Asset accounts like cash increase on the left side or the debit side. So every time bookkeepers and accountants um, want each other to know they have more cash, they're gonna say, Are we, we're gonna debit cash $10,000, okay? And so debiting cash $10,000 in an accounting world simply means we have more cash. Remember, this $10,000 has to be put on one side or the other because an account has two sides. The left side of asset accounts like cash indicate an increase in the amount. So if the cash account increases on the left side or the debit side, all the amounts on the right side of the account means that it's decreasing because again, accounts only have two sides. One side increases it, the other side decreases it. So yes, all assets increase on the left side or the debit side, okay? And so every single debit here that you see, this 10,000, which is from stockholders putting cash in, this 5,000, which was from the, the bank loan that we got cash, this $1,200, which was from a client who gave us money up front and we owe them you know, a bunch of tours. And this $10,000 was from Copa company that, because we performed, we gave them a bunch of tours and they gave us 10,000. Sounds like a hell of a tour. But then as you know, we used cash. We used cash to buy equipment. We used cash to pay all types of expenses from rent to uh, buying prepaid insurance, to paying dividends, to uh, paying uh, salaries and wages expense. So every time we are going to show less cash or a decrease in cash, those numbers are going to fall on the opposite side of the account. For assets, the credit side of the account shows less of that asset. So here we simply have the cash account. Uh, we're showing on the debit side every time we've had an increase in cash. On the credit side, we show every time there's a decrease in cash. 
if you notice the debit side or the left side is bigger. In other words, there was more money coming in, more increases than decreases. And it's bigger by $15,200. In other words, if you added all these numbers up on the debit side, and you added all these numbers up on the credit side, the debit side is bigger than the credit side by $15,200. Okay. Um, and so you'll get used to this is called an account balance, an account balance. Assets, uh, because they increase on the debit side, will have normal balances or balances on the debit side. We call that a normal balance. Um, that's not true for liabilities and stock holes equity accounts, which increase on the credit side, okay, which you'll see very shortly. So this is an important type of thing to, to remember. Um, we have a whole bunch of accounts that we just learned about in the first few couple of chapters plus. Every single one of those accounts has two sides, a left side and a right side. We call the left side the debit side, we call the right side the credit side, okay? When something, a transaction occurs that affects the account, if it's an asset account, if it's an asset account, like cash, we record increases on the left side, which is the debit side. So when accountants talk, they'll say, let's, we need a, we're gonna debit cash for 10,000 because basically we have $10,000 more in cash is what they're saying. However, when we paid for that equipment, this $5,000 remember was in our a, a analysis was subtracted out, right? When we thought about we had less cash. Well, we don't subtract out anything. In accounting, all we do is say, okay, we're gonna credit cash for 5,000. That tells everybody that we have less cash. So just by saying the word uh, a $5,000 credit to cash means that the right side of the account, the credit side of the account, is where that $5,000 went for cash, which means automatically we have less because that's how accountants and bookkeepers talk. Credits to cash always mean we have less cash. We never have to say the word less or minus or we already know credits to cash mean less cash. We already know it's a decrease. Just like when you say a debit to cash, we already know there's more. We already know there's more because the debit side of the cash account simply means more. Yeah. Increase side, decrease side. Okay. So I'm gonna come back to our broad, Zoom meeting and uh, just ask a little bit about how that went. So everyone understands the account. Every account is set up that way. Each account has two sides. You understand you need to forget what society has taught you about debit and credit. It's not about debit cards or credit cards. You're not thinking about that. We're studying accounting. <laughs> In accounting, debit simply means the left side of an account. In accounting, credit means the right side of the account. Accounts have two sides, a debit side and a credit side. Just like a coin has two sides, heads or tails, yes? So once a transaction affects an account, it's either going to affect it on one side or the other. That's, your, that's going to be the trick to this part of the chapter is understanding, how do we say I have more accounts receivable? How do I say I have more notes payable? How do I say I have more common stock? Well, it's the side in which, of those accounts in which we see an increase. And that's what you're gonna learn right now, okay? It's part of the analysis. So we're gonna to go to the PowerPoint slideshow now. Okay, and actually I have to um, go up to objective two. Sorry about that. Okay. So very important to sort of understand 
that not only is uh, a transaction has a dual effect, which we learned means at least two accounts are going to be affected. Um, but it's going to be a double entry to the system, which means that uh, we're going to have an equal number on the debit side of an account as we will the credit side of an account for every transaction. For every transaction, for every debit you, you put down, you're gonna need an equal credit somewhere else in another account. These affect two different accounts because like I said, there's at least two accounts that are affected by a transaction. You noticed that because you had a bunch of homework on it. You saw how every transaction affected two accounts. Well, guess what? One of those accounts will be affected on the debit side. And the other one of those accounts is going to be affected on the credit side. And that's going to be the mystery to solve today. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing today. It takes practice, I will tell you that. Here's an example, and this sadly isn't in your book. Um, but it's a decent example, so I'll just go ahead. I'll call this account, um, I'll call this account accounts receivable. So I'll just put a big A R here for accounts receivable. Okay. Um, and this uh, accounts receivable is an asset account. Yes, it's specifically a current asset, but it's an asset account. So assets, asset accounts will increase or show increases on the debit side. What you'll see in a lot of um, books is they'll abbreviate it DR. And I think that actually comes from either the Italian or the Latin translation of debit. Uh, otherwise it doesn't really make a lot of sense uh, to a lot of people. And as you see, accounts receivable has a credit side. They have a right side of the account, credit. Credit is often uh, abbreviated CR in your books when you're looking at these types of things. And there were three transactions that happened during this period of time that affected accounts receivable. Their transaction one uh, meant that we had to debit accounts receivable. So accounts receivable is an asset account and as I mentioned with you with cash, assets, assets increase on the debit side. So this $10,000 debit to accounts receivable would mean that we had $10,000 of receivables more that we're waiting for. We're waiting to receive $10,000 more than we were before. Um, the same is true with uh, transaction number three. This $8,000 debit simply means uh, we are waiting to receive $8,000 more from clients who owe us money. We've already done the work for them. We're waiting to receive the money. Um, but again, the other side of the account will show us, in this case, transaction number two, that we had to reduce accounts receivable by $3,000 at one point. Well, why? Well, because in many cases, somebody who owed us money, because remember, accounts receivable is waiting to receive the money. Once they actually, once you actually receive the money, you have to lower the balance. You have to lower the balance. So the credits to account receivable simply indicate the amount of money you have received because you're waiting to receive it. And it lowers the balance. There's $18,000 of debits and $3,000 of credits. The debit side is larger by $15,000. And so this account has a debit balance of $15,000. That's how we're gonna talk. That's what we're gonna get used to, okay? And you'll see this. It's gonna go to, um, gonna go to the accounts. Um, asset accounts, as I've been talking about, have a debit side and a credit side. It just happens to be the debit side is the side that shows more or shows an increase. So think about all the assets you'd know about, cash, 
accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid insurance, equipment, you know. Uh, when we have more of those based on a transaction, we're going to show it on the debit side of that particular account. Okay. Every account record is separate. So, you know, whatever happens in cash happens in cash. It'll be separate from whatever happens in supplies, which will be separate from whatever happened in insurance, prepaid insurance, et cetera. So again, assets increase on the debit side. Um, if we have to, like, again, you saw a bunch of cash being used. We paid, uh, we paid a few expenses, we paid um, dividends, we paid for uh, equipment. Uh, when we have to lower the balance in an asset account is when we have to credit the account. So we have to credit cash to show we had less cash after a particular transaction. So debiting cash means we have more cash. Crediting cash means we have less cash because remember, the cash account, like all the other accounts, only has two sides, a debit side and a credit side. And only two things can happen in the cash account, like what can happen in all the other accounts. You either have more of it or you have less of it. There's only two things that can happen in every account. Your job in studying this and getting used to this is what side tells me I have more. For assets, the debit side tells you you have more. And what side of an asset account tells me I have less? Well, the credit side of any asset account tells me I have less. Okay. So that's an important thing to remember about assets. Uh, the debit side is the increase side, and it's always going to be bigger than the credit side. So the balance, once we add all the debits up, and we add all the credits up and compare them, which is basically subtracting them, your balance is always going to be on the debit side because the debit side is always going to be bigger than the credit side. Mm -hmm. All right. On the other side of the balance sheet, we have liabilities and stockholders' equity. This is where things kind of get odd because Remember, the balance sheet is assets equals liabilities and stockholders' equity. Liabilities and stockholders' equity accounts actually increase on the opposite side. Credits, the right side of a liability account, increases it. It increases it. So to say we have more notes payable means that we're going to credit notes payable. That tells us we have more notes payable. Whenever we have more accounts payable, because accounts payable is a liability account, we are going to say we're going to credit accounts payable for a certain amount because we owe more. Okay. So liability accounts increase on the credit side. What happens when we pay down accounts payable? What happens when we pay those bills that we owe? Well, once we pay down a particular debt, we have less debt. And the debit side of the liability account shows that we have less debt in that account. Okay. When you compare liability accounts, the credit side is always going to be bigger than the debit side. And so we say the balance on a liability account is normally on the credit side, the normal balance will be on the credit side of the account. So again, credits are going to be larger than debits because the credit side of a liability is how we say we have more. Stockholders equity is a little bit of a, where you're gonna spend most of your time. Let's put it this way. So you're going to spend most of your time because stockholders equity is expanded in our minds because it includes the retained earnings statement, <clears throat> which already includes the income statement, right? Uh, we talked about that last class. The income statement gives us net income that gets moved to the retained earnings statement. We take dividends away and that the remaining balance goes into retained earnings, which is on the balance sheet. So there's a lot to it. 
Stockholders' equity, again, uh, shows all of their increases. More stockholder equity is shown on the right side of, the, of these accounts. Okay, so the more, if we have more common stock, we show that on the credit side. If we have more retained earnings, we show that on the credit side of the account. Okay, the odd thing is retained earnings has a lot going on. Like I said, the income statement folds into the retained earnings statement, which of course folds into retained earnings. So there's a lot to look at with retained earnings. One thing we know about from the retained earnings statement is we take away the dividends, right? Dividends mean, dividends mean we have less retained earnings. Everyone agree with that? When you look at the, the uh, retained earnings statement, we are taking away dividends, right? Dividends are basically subtracted out of that. So that means that dividends would be the same as saying we have less retained earnings. So the dividends, which is its own account, dividends are always gonna show up on the debit side because more dividends means less retained earnings. This is how you have to see it. Dividends are on the debit side because the more we have in dividends, the less we have in retained earnings, okay? So this is something, this relationship here is something you're gonna to need to look at and think about. The same is true with the income statement, right? Uh, the income statement starts with revenue. Look how much revenue does for people, okay? For the business, uh-huh. Can everyone still see the slideshow here? All right, thank you, sorry. Um, revenue, remember, revenue is when a company is selling its products or services to customers. That's the money they're collecting from the customers for selling the products or services they have for sale. Revenue covers, as you know from the income statement, revenue has to cover all the expenses and there has to be extra revenue left over, which is the profit, net income of the company. So in essence, revenue contributes to the profit of the company. Revenue contributes to the retained earnings of the company because the profit is retained other than dividends. So revenues are seen in the same light as increasing retained earnings. So revenues are going to be on the credit side, show up on the credit side of the account. The more and more revenue uh, the company has, you're going to always have a credit to revenue, service revenue, credit to sales revenue to show we have more revenue. It makes sense, like I said, because the extra revenue, which is will show up on that credit side, whoops, will show up in retained earnings. It's linked. It's linked. Uh, expenses, on the other hand, right, the more and more expenses we have, the less and less profit, the less and less retained earnings. So you can look at expenses as decreasing retained earnings. So the more, the higher your expenses, the more your expenses, the lower your profit. So let me go back to the other part. If it's a lower profit, you're gonna have, or even a loss, right? Just like dividends, the higher your dividends, the smaller your retained earnings. So dividends will show up on the debit side because it shrinks retained earnings. The debit side shrinks retained earnings. Um, revenue shows up on the credit side because revenue increases retained earnings. So it matches on the credit side. Expenses take away from the profit of the company. The higher the expenses, the less profit the company has. So in essence, expenses take away from retained earnings. So expenses and dividends will always show up on the debit side. Revenue is, will always show up on the credit side. There's a wonderful, um, I'm just gonna move on here. These are some debit rules. I'm gonna actually go to this particular illustration, which is in your book. 
Uh, but basically speaking, this is what we have to know. This is what we have to know. Matter of fact, if you have, um, if you have your book handy, <coughs> which uh, I just did, <laughs> um, this particular chart is on page 105. So if you have your book and you turn to page 105, uh, you will see this particular illustration uh, showing uh, what happens in terms of what side of the account assets increase on, which is the debit side, what side they decrease on. Uh, for liabilities, what side they increase on, what side they decrease on. Uh, common stock, retained earnings and revenue all increase on the credit side. But because look, we take expenses take away from the profit. And of course, dividends take away from the retained earnings. Both have the same effect. Less retained earnings, the more expenses and the more dividends we have, the less retained earnings. So we show expenses and dividends on the debit side. Okay. Uh, I think this is an important one to keep handy uh, for yourself. You really kind of need to keep this handy. Um, because this is gonna help you understand and apply these rules to accounting. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring us back. I'm gonna actually ask for your uh, participation in the next exercise that we're gonna be doing. But I wanna go back and uh, look at all those 11 events that happened to Sierra Corporation from last class in Learning Objective One. But this time, I want you to analyze those with the debit and credit analysis in your head. What side of the account was affected by what you saw? Uh, and if you don't mind, I'm gonna first start by calling for volunteers. I'd like every, but I'd like every single person to have a chance because this is a learning um, exercise. You're not graded on it. I just wanna see uh, what you remember or what you can learn. And sometimes actually when we do it together as a group, the learning is actually greater because we can actually, we're thinking as, even though the question is being answered to somebody else, we're thinking about the solution. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring you back to, uh, uh, where am I bringing you? To Wiley, <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> I'm not gonna bring you here. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, actually, I'm going to bring you to the PowerPoint again. My bad. Uh, I just want to bring you to a different slide. Back to objective one. Uh, when we were analyzing transactions. Now, what I want you to do is think about this from a debit and credit perspective. Okay. If it helps you, again, Asset accounts, and which for Sierra Corporation, there were four asset accounts. Asset accounts increase on the debit side, okay? They increase, they decrease on the credit side, all right? The opposite is true for liabilities and stockholders equity accounts. Stockholders equity accounts and liabilities increase on the credit side decrease on the debit side. The exceptions are expenses and dividends, right? Because the more you have in expenses, the less profit you have, the less retained earnings you have. The more you pay out in dividends, the less profit you have retained in the company. So expenses and dividends we show on the debit side to show that they have decreased. All right, so uh, let's just start with the very, very first one. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and erase this if I can. Um, and only because I have a limited view of, of who's here, uh, I'm just gonna call on people in the order that I see them, I'm sorry. So let's, well, let me first with a volunteer. Um, here with the very first one, we have cash of $10,000 in exchange for 10,000 of common stock. We analyzed it. We said we had more cash and we have more common stock. Terrific. This step is 
talk to me like an accountant or a bookkeeper would talk. Increase, uh, when we have $10,000 more in cash, how would a bookkeeper or an accountant say that? And if we have $10,000 more in common stock, how would an accountant or bookkeeper say that? That's the challenge. Oh, looks like I have a response already. Okay, so uh, Gio, uh, you don't have a, uh, a microphone today? Um, so yes, what would, uh, he's exactly right here. Okay, not the moment, okay. Um, so how an accountant would see this transaction uh, right away is we would have a debit to cash for $10,000 because the debit side of the cash account means we have more, right? So a debit to cash for 10,000 is exactly how they would start this. But again, it's a dual entry system. So a debit to cash of 10,000 isn't the end of the story. How did they get that 10,000? There's another account affected. So what else would they say? After they say debit 10,000 to cash, what else would they say to balance this equation? Exactly. All right, Michelle, thank you. They would also say credit common stock for 10,000. Okay, so notice that not only were two accounts affected, cash and common stock, both sides were affected. For cash, the debit side was affected. A debit to cash of 10,000, the debit side was affected. For common stock, the credit side was affected by 10,000. Does everyone see that? That's what you have to look for in all of this. Okay, so um, that's good. So a debit to cash for 10,000, credit to common stock for 10,000 is exactly how they would be thinking. That's how they would say it. Here's event number two, where Sierra borrowed $5,000 from Castle Bank. And we said, okay, they have more cash because when you get a loan, you get the cash. And so that's what this says here. But now for the very first time, we have a notes payable. And of course we have more notes payable. So uh, can someone go ahead? I'd like uh, for someone to talk, just so it's a little bit faster than typing. And I, at least I can kind of, who would be willing to, to come up to the plate and try this one? Talk to me like an accountant would talk, please. Otherwise I just start calling on people randomly. No one wants to go? Would it be debit to cash for 5,000? Okay, that's part one. What else would it be? What's uh, payable, 5,000? Okay, there we go. So again, for every transaction, two accounts are affected at least, right? So you saw that cash was affected and notes payable was affected. So when we do our debit and credit analysis, we know that there has to be an equal number. So for cash, you're right. Debit to cash because cash is more cash. So the debit side of the cash account is affected. So the credit side of another account has to be affected. That's the balance. If there's a debit, there's an offsetting credit. Guaranteed somewhere. And I think Nick was the one who mentioned a credit to notes payable is perfect, right? Because notes payable is a liability. Liabilities increase on the credit side. And here we have more uh, notes payable. So a credit to notes payable will tell accountants we have more notes payable. So debit to cash for 5,000, credit to notes payable for 5,000. That's how they would talk, right? Now, and thank you. Thank you for, for helping. Now here's interesting because here only assets are affected. Uh, it looks like we have more equipment, right? Because we bought equipment and we have less cash. Woo! All right. So how exciting. Who's next? I wanna I want everyone to have a chair a turn. So um, that's how the learning happens. So who's next? Who wants to stand up? Uh, I'll go. 
it would be a credit to cash for five thousand and a debit to equipment for five thousand. Giving you well, if I stood up, it would be a standing O. Ah, uh, you know, but it's it's one of those things. Great, uh, that's exactly how they would talk, right? We have more equipment. Five thousand debit to equipment shows more equipment. We have less cash. Credit cash five thousand means less cash. That's exactly how they would talk. So that's great. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for for doing that. Uh, here we have another event in which Sierra Corporation received $1,200 cash advance from a client. So again, we talked about it. We said, okay, a cash advance. We, uh, they, just gave, they just got a whole bunch of cash, but now they owe this client a whole bunch of tours. <laughs> okay. And we call that unearned service revenue for sure. So who else would like to step up to the plate? Tell me, how would you talk about this as an accountant? Talk to me like an accountant for this. Who's next? I don't know, looks like I'm gonna have to dig here. <sighs> okay, I'm sorry, Olivia, you're, you're one of the first ones on my screen. Uh, would you like to give it a shot, please? Um. Debit to cash, 1200 credit to unearned revenue for 1200 Perfect. Nice job. Thank you so much. Credit to, uh, debit to cash means we have more cash. Credit to unearned service revenue means we have a more unearned service revenue. That's exactly what happened here. That's how they would talk about it. Excellent. Nice job. Event number five uh, happened on October the 3rd. Uh, they received $10,000 in cash from this company because they performed guided services. So they've done a bunch of tours for this company, got $10,000 cash. We analyzed it. Obviously we have more cash. And now for the very first time we have service revenue, right? Um, listed here. So knowing that, how would we talk about it like an accountant? Um, let's see, Jose, why don't you give this a shot? Um, debit to cash for 10,000. Yes. That's, that's half of it. What's the other half? Uh, credit to revenue for 10,000. Credit for sir to service revenue. Right. So we're going to name, that's right. When, again, when it comes to revenues and expenses, we're going to name the specific account. So in this case, it's service revenue gets the credit for 10,000 and I'm giving you credit, Jose. I also have my hoodie today. How's that? Although I kind of look like the, uh, the emperor uh, from Star Wars. Ah, oh, yeah, this way. Okay, anyway, I will, uh, I'll stop that. Good, nice job. Amen, hallelujah. Moving along, event number six. This was interesting because uh, they paid rent. They paid rent and they paid it in cash. We thought about it, we analyzed it, we said, okay, well, we certainly have less cash. But now, because we have a rent expense, we have less retained earnings. Right. So talk to me like an accountant, and let me go down. Ryan, how are you feeling, Ryan? Give it a shot. I can't hear you. Debit 900 to cash and then credit 900 to expenses. No, because if I hear I have a debit to cash, that meant I have more cash. Oh, and yeah. I, have, I have less cash here. So credit 900 to cash and then debit 900 to, what was it, rent expense? Exactly, yes. Good. I'm glad you mentioned the exact account. Yes, we're going to debit rent expense for 900 and we're gonna credit cash for 900. That tells us we have more expenses, which is the same as less retained earnings, and we have less cash. Okay, nice job, thank you for that, good job. Uh, all right, event number seven, 
<clears throat> we paid uh, $600 cash for an insurance policy. We thought about it, said, okay, uh, we just, uh, we bought an insurance policy. So we have $600 more of prepaid insurance, uh, but we used cash. So we have $600 less of cash. Um, so Nick, I don't want to bother you. I know your company, uh, you know, but um, go ahead and, and hit us up here. Can you uh, talk to me like an accountant? Uh, so credit to cash for 600 and debit to prepaid insurance for 600. All right. Nice job. All right. You can go back. You can add ease. Uh, okay. Uh, nice. Everyone uh, understood that, right? More prepaid insurance is on the debit side, less cash is on the credit side of the account. Again, accounts only have two sides. So I'm telling you, you gotta pick a side. All right, nice work. Thank you, thank you, Nick. All right, uh, event number eight, Ocho. I love that name, Ocho. My favorite number in Spanish, Ocho. I think if I had a dog or a puppy, I would name him Ocho. Here, Ocho. Okay. Oh, Joe, don't do that. Okay. So, Terrell, how you feeling? Because I want you to be next if you if you're if you're here. Um, on October the fifth, Sierra Corporation, they bought a whole mess of supplies on account. Twenty five hundred dollars worth of supplies. Uh, we analyzed it. We said, okay, there's more supplies. So we saw an increase in supplies. But because we bought them on account, we have to pay this bill later. So we have more accounts payable. So, um, Charlie, you wanna give this a shot? Talk to me like an accountant. Are you here? You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, good. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm driving. I don't even have a screen in front of me. I was listening the whole time. Well, let's see how good of a listener you are. Okay. Give <laughs> <laughs> a shot. Okay, can you, say it to, can you say everything to me one more time? Yeah, you think it's fair that I'm picking on him while he's driving? I don't think it. I don't think it's fair. Uh, you know, I don't want you to get into an accident because you're thinking about debit and credit analysis. You know. <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna move on. I think. Well, I think Juanisha is able to help you out, though. Okay. Juanisha, isn't that true, Juanisha? Are you able to help him? Yeah. All right. Awesome. So um, talk to me like an account. Okay. Um. $2,500 debit to credit for supplies and on, debit, debit to credit because no, one, of, one or the other. So oh, debit, debit to credit for $2,500 debit to credit for supplies. Debit. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. First of all, take a deep breath. Okay. All right, everything's going to be all right. $2,500 debit for supplies. Added for supply and 2500 debit for accounts payable. Well, you got half of it right. So, um, a debit to the supplies account is correct because we have more supplies. Oh, credit. Supplies. I'm sorry, because liabilities is credit. Yes, credit for liabilities. Correct. So, and just remember once, even if you figured out, and always remember this once you figured out and used. The debit side, you know, the op, it's always going to be a credit on the other side because it's going to equal out. Every, every transaction, you're going to have an equal number of debits and credits for every transaction. So debit supplies 2,500. So the other side is going to be a credit to, in this case, accounts payable for 2,500, which you uh, identified the account and the amount correctly. All right. Very good. So we good on that? All right. Uh, event number nine happened not to be an event. They just hired people. And as we said uh, last class, uh, if it doesn't immediately affect the financial condition, we don't put anything down. We don't have to record anything in accounting. Uh, so hiring people, you know, we don't care. You can hire a thousand people today if we wanted to. Uh, it's not a transaction because we don't pay them up front. We don't pay them as we hire them. We only pay them after they work. So after these people work, well, then we're going to do some accounting when we pay them. But when we hire them, nothing happened. Okay. Nothing happened. 
Uh, so now we're counting there. Event number 10 showed that we paid a dividend. We paid a cash dividend. Uh, so we thought about it, said, okay, we have less cash. We have less cash. But dividends, as you know, means less retained earnings. We take it away on the retained earnings statement, right? So talk to me like an accountant. Who will be next? Let me go down here. Um, all right. Oh, there's a whole bunch of people with their cameras off. So I'm going after you. <laughs> Paul, how about you? Paul Freitas, I know you're around. Talk to me like an accountant. Are you talking? You're going to be off of mute. Let me un. My bad. There you go. Is it credit to cash 500 and then debit to dividends 500? Excellent. That's exactly right. Nice job. Okay, you can you can darken yourself now. Must be a little shy. Excellent. Excellent. And the last event, we paid those employees five uh, four thousand dollars. Matter of fact, we paid them for their salaries. We thought about it. Said, okay, well, they're not working for nothing. We're paying them cash, so we have less cash. But when we pay our employees, that's salaries and wages expense, which means we have less retained earnings. And so, let me deep dive into, uh, here, let's see now. Uh, Brandon, I haven't heard from you in ages, Brandon. Hey. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? Oh yeah, yeah, living the COVID life, doing good. Uh, so, tell us, Brandon, Talk to me like an accountant for this one here. All right. So it'd be credit to cash, 4,000. Yes. And debit to expenses, 4,000. Okay. Get, give me the specific expenses. It is just a type wages of account. expense. There you go. Yeah. Yes. We're going to debit uh, salaries and wages expense. Yes. So um, excellent. And you see what I also did with him and that happens often. You have to uh, be specific on the type of account that it is. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Brandon, thank you. Nice job. Thanks. Um, how do you feel about this? I'm going to bring us all back to, uh, to the main screen. Uh, how do you feel about these accounts having two sides and one side increases it, the other side decreases it, and it's just a matter of learning how that works? How do, how do you feel about that, OK? Not that I can make it any better. Ah, you know, it's not like I can give you a prescription. Ah, you know, <laughs> sick of accounting. Here's, a, here's some drugs. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. It's going to take time. It's definitely going to take time. Michelle is right. Okay. Uh, and you don't have to memorize anything. I'm not asking anyone to memorize things. I'm asking you to use your resources. Okay. It does help when you review these over and over again. It will sink into your memory. I know this stuff by heart because I've been teaching accounting for 20 years. So it's, it's something that's already been seeping in my memory for many, many, many years. Um, this is all new to most of you, if not all of you. And so this is gonna take a little bit of time. This is an open resource course. I want you to use your resources. I want you to use your book. I want you to use illustrations. I want you to use guides because I think this is a good way to figure out how to, how to do things and help yourself. Um, eventually, it'll, it'll go to memory. Memorizing as an adult happens differently. You know, you're not doing your times tables like you're in third grade, you know, and memorizing. Uh, adults learn often by just doing things over and over and over again, like, oh yeah, I know how to do that. You know. um, same thing here. You're gonna see this over and over again. It, it'll, it'll become part of your memory eventually, okay? <laughs> don't force it in there. <laughs> Memories don't like that. <laughs> Um, all right, well, the next part here, if you understand this and, and talking like an accountant, accountants talk debits and credits, and this is what I wanted to practice with you as well, because we're going to be talking debits and credits until the cows come home. And guess what? The cows don't come home until after you're done with all of your accounting classes. The cows are out for a while, apparently. Ah, you know, so hopefully they're partying. <laughs> no, 
Okay. I, I was, I'm trying. I'm trying. I didn't move anybody, ah, you know, on that one. You have a beef with that? Okay. Never mind. Uh, okay. So uh, I'll stop. I'm trying to at least inject a little humor in. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Ryan, are you impressed at all? You just kind of sit there. Like, yeah, okay, good. good. Right. I've been trying to impress you for sure. Uh, okay, so um, the next step is to actually do accounting. Are you ready? Or as Shrek would say, are you ready? <laughs> Donkey. <sighs> no? Is that how he would say it? Is it too much of a, you know, I just, I think I put a little bit too much emphasis on the R. We'll need a little bit more caffeine. All right, we're learning more. You ready? I hope so. Okay, I need to uh, fast forward here to learning objective three. Can everyone see the slideshow for learning objective three? Yep, okay. All right, so in this case here, um, the very, 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 very first place accounting happens is the journal, okay? Um, the journal is where everything starts in accounting. Look how much you have to know before you can actually sit down and do accounting and write something in the journal. You had to know about all those accounts, uh, which is why I emphasized them for the first few chapters, just to get to know them. Uh, because accounting is about the accounts. And then you have to learn the transaction analysis and the debit and credit analysis. Now that you've learned that and you learned part of that today, you're actually ready to do some bookkeeping and accounting, which means you're going to be putting this information in the journal. Okay. So this is where we're going to be doing. You did the hard part. The hard part is analyzing everything. That's why I spent so much time on learning objective one with you and just finishing learning objective two with you on the debit and credit analysis. Uh, because once you get those two pieces down, the rest of it's gonna flow. It's, gonna, it's not gonna be that bad at all. It's gonna flow quite nicely. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is actually journalizing, putting our analysis in a journal and from the journal, it travels to other places that we're going to be dealing with in our next class next week. Okay. So uh, a journal basically keeps a chronological order of everything that's happened in a business as far as transactions are concerned. And these are one after another after another that are recorded in the journal. Okay. Um, <clears throat> putting information in the journal or entering transaction information in the journal is called journalizing. And so you're gonna be asked to journalize quite a bit. Matter of fact, the journal is so important, you're gonna be seeing it throughout this class. And then when you go on to your next class managerial, they also use a journal, uh, or they assume you understand the journal in that class, um, because there's more journal entries to do there too. Uh, it's very time consuming work for bookkeepers. Um, it's thankfully all uh, automated, it's all computerized. And so, um, uh, so that helps a great deal. You know? What we're gonna be doing in this chapter and in the next chapter is doing it all manually. So you'll see uh, a little bit about how, what type of process it's like the process. All right. all right, so back to the journal. What you've been doing for analysis is simply going to be expressed in the journal. Like I said here, for Sierra Corporation, we, this is the very first thing we looked at. We issued common stock in exchange for cash, 10,000. We analyzed it. We said there was more cash. There was more common stock. That's great. Now we just understood that, okay, more cash means the debit side was affected. So debit cash, 10,000. More common stock means the credit side was affected. So credit common stock, 10,000. That's all the analysis that has to get done. Now we simply mark it in the journal. 
So we're going to journalize. So we're going to do the first one first, second one second. So again, we already analyzed these. More cash, more common stock. We already decided more cash is the debit. More common stock is the credit side. This is how a journal would look. Journalizing this is, so the date is October the 1st. So it's going to be, it's chronological. So the date's going to show up. Now, because the, this column is for the account titles. Now, because the cash account goes first, because as you see where the numbers go, the debit column is first, the credit column is second. So we always list the debit account first, okay? So the debit to cash of 10,000 is listed first. Again, in a journal, the debit column is the first column the numbers go in and it's listed first. Credit column is listed second. <clears throat> the common stock account is credited by 10,000. So you'll see that here. Right. Um, notice too that the credit account title is indented a little bit. Usually the, the, the account that we're debiting is relatively flush against the margin, but then we actually indent a little bit to show the difference that the first account was debited, the second account was credited. So this little space here. And this is journaling. You've already done all that analysis, you're just writing it down. Okay, not that bad. Let's take a look at the next one, right? Remember that second event, they borrowed $5,000 by signing a note payable. We said they had more cash and more notes payable. We just did some more debit and credit analysis. More cash means a debit to cash. More notes payable means a credit to notes payable. Now we write it in the journal. This is the journal entry for that. Cash, October the 1st is the date. Cash with a $5,000 debit. Notes payable, indented, $5,000 credit. This is journaling. It's pretty, I think it's relatively a piece of cake. You've already done all the hard work. October the 2nd, we bought equipment for 5,000. We analyzed it. We have more equipment. We have less cash, okay? Again, the date goes first in the journal. The equipment account is the account that's getting debited for 5,000, so it goes first. Cash is credited 5,000, okay? So this is the journal. This is actually what a journal looks like when it's all printed out. Um, again, it's printed, you'll see the uh, chronological order. If this is continued on through October, you'll see it all day by day in that order. Um, the debit column is the first column. So we usually put the debit account title first and then the credit account title second. Um, the explanation can be written down. It's written down in this textbook because I think it, it just wants you to know what it is. In normal cases, I, I would never put down the explanation unless it was necessary to explain. Um, but a credit to com, a debit to common stock, credit, sorry, a debit to cash and a credit to common stock is so common that you kind of know what happened. So we wouldn't necessarily have to put an explanation for it. Um, but it's listed in this book here because it's, you guys are learning, it's, it's new. So it's good to, to remind yourself. All right, and the do it exercise here at the end of the chapter, and it's just a quick review. Uh, this is about Kate Brown's beauty salon and the name of the business is Hair It Is. Well, that might be my problem. I've been going, I've been losing hair over time. So I might've been going to the competitor, hair it went, um, or hair it goes. <laughs> All right, so I hope someone laughed at that outside of me. I have to keep myself a little occupied, sorry. Um, the first event that happened was they issued common stock to shareholders in exchange for cash, 20,000. So we have more cash, we have more common stock. You kind of know what that looks like. A debit to cash, credit to common stock. It's always gonna look like that in the journal. Here, it looks like on the second thing, we purchased equipment, but we purchased it on account, which means we're gonna be paying it in 30 days. Any bill you have to pay in 30 days is an accounts payable, right? So here we have more equipment, debit equipment, 4,800. More accounts payable, credit to accounts payable. 
Uh, here, the last one, we interviewed three people for the position of stylist. Just like hiring someone, interviewing someone, you don't pay them. Right? There's no financial transaction as this is going on. So no accounting occurred, no transaction occurred, nothing to write down. Okay. All right, so now we're back to the uh, main screen. So everyone back on the main screen can see each other. CC. Uh, the journal, as you see, uh, is relatively easy uh, because you've already done all the hard work in your head already. You've already done all the analysis. You've already figured out what side of the account is affected, the debit side or the credit side. The journal is just putting it down, putting it down. It's relatively straightforward. So uh, for this week, um, you're gonna have homework to make sure you understand the accounts, the debit and credit side of the accounts. And you're gonna be doing some journal entries because the journal is critical, important. Um, and that's gonna be your homework for the week. It never changes from here. In other words, the journal is just how we start doing accounting. And so, and the accounts, we always name what side of the account is affected, debit side or the credit side. And based on what side of the account is affected, we already know if there's more or less in the account. And you'll get there, and you'll get there. So hang in there and hang tough. Um, any last questions on any of this stuff? I'm gonna actually uh, explain a couple of things. We're gonna be ending soon. Okay.